Howdy folks and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about and showcase the upcoming game Task Force Admiral. I've been enjoying a ton of games published by Microprose lately with Regiments and Carrier Command 2 being just some of those. I figured why not check out what they have coming out soon and this is kind of how I found Task Force Admiral or TFA. If you want to check out the game yourself, I have linked the store page in the description below. I just want to thank the developers for giving me some of their older gameplay to showcase in the background, so it's not just pictures. However, I was told to say, and I quote, This is all over a year old, and the game has become a lot cuter since then. It's 1942, the infamous sneak attack of the Japanese on Pearl Harbor is still fresh in everyone's minds. Your job as an Allied Carrier Task Force Admiral is to take the battle to the Japanese in the Pacific and stop them from reaching their objectives. While using your own carrier air groups to search and destroy the Japanese Navy, you'll have to protect your ships from incoming attacks in over 30 historical and fictional scenarios. The developers state this is only the first entry in a series of games that will dive deeper into the genre. Now, whether this means we'll get a Task Force Admiral Volume 2 Japanese carrier battles, or we'll get something a lot crazier like Task Force Admiral Falklands War kind of remains to be seen. I'll touch on this and my thoughts on that later on in the video. But before we get too deep into the details, I'll let you watch the full trailer and then we'll go over some of the features you can expect to see in the game. Of course, the trailer, the screenshots, the older footage all looks fantastic, but let's talk about the game's features. Now, I'm actually sticking to their listed order of their features as something that immediately drew my attention was the inclusion of not only a post-battle replay player system, but also a full scenario builder. They sadly don't specify too much about the replay system, but if it's anything like War Thunder or even World of Warships, that would honestly be pretty awesome. Being able to get some nice cinematic shots of the action while not having to worry about the fact you're not giving out orders at the same time would be a very welcome addition. There's also not many details about the editor. However, it is mentioned we will be able to use the in-game mission builder or quick scenario generator to design our own carrier battles. Now, the quick scenario editor sounds like you just select a few options like the weather or your force makeup, and you'll basically have an endless variety of scenarios to check out. Hopefully, the mission builder will have some sort of workshop upload and download support. Nowadays, I feel like games that incorporate the way more easily accessed Steam Workshop just are so much more successful when it comes to community modding versus having to use external websites, discords, etc. to try and share mods for the game. Another big part of TFA will be the narrative engine managing both scripted and random events. I assume this also kind of refers to their pre-scenario briefings you'll get before missions. They actually have a briefing prototype video on their dedicated YouTube channel, and I'll just show you a couple of seconds of that to give you an idea. But these are made using actual archives, trying to give players a realistic and historical level of intel, while still keeping it easy-ish to understand for people who are not necessarily World War II Pacific theater buffs like myself. The preliminaries of the Japanese offensive in the Southwest Pacific are underway. And there's indications that the main first objective is the Australian base at Port Moresby. Objectives in the Solomon Islands, particularly the outpost of Telugi, are to be occupied too, so as to secure the flank of the main thrust. 
A large invasion convoy is currently assembling in Rabul and might have already left for Port Moresby. Its estimated time of arrival is May 7th, four days from now. The game will feature over 90 classes of ships as well as over 40 types of aircraft with accurate to real life ship and aircraft camouflage and historical markings. The store page claims this is the quote most complete array of units ever recreated in 3D for a Pacific naval simulation end quote. Now clearly some of the big ones we can expect would be the SBD Dauntless Dive Bombers, the TBF Avenger Torpedo Planes, or the Japanese H-6K Flying Boat. On the surface we can probably expect famous carriers such as the USN Yorktown or the Japanese Kaga. As a huge fan of submarines I'm secretly crossing my fingers hoping that maybe somewhere down the line as the developers set themselves is only volume one of TFA, we will see some underwater representation. They actually mentioned Silent Hunter 4 themselves, which by the way is a great submarine simulator, as an inspiration for how they did their briefings. But what's arguably a lot more plausible for future add-ons or volumes would be, for example, a playable Imperial Japanese Navy faction, because most of those models are already in the game. The game is currently slated to release with single player only, perhaps down the line a multiplayer game mode will be added, though I'm not sure how that would work, considering both pausing the game and time compression where you speed up the time to, you know, make it a little less of a wait, are definitely mentioned in the text multiple times, which might get a little bit messy when you have more than one person trying to control that. So earlier I mentioned something like a Falklands version of the game, and honestly, as cool as that sounds, that's just probably not in the books anytime soon, or maybe really any war besides World War II for right now. But I'd love to see them expand the time frame all the way to 1945, with missions for example either sink or protect the battleship Yamato, or maybe have some crazy American and Japanese prototypes duke it out over the Pacific in a hypothetical scenario. The developers talk about fully customizable realism and difficulty settings. Something like Silent Hunter's realism tweaking options come to mind. For example, do you want airdrop torpedoes to be able to be duds where they don't explode? Or do you want to have access to an external camera view? Or do you want to have to worry about fuel for your freedom planes? Do you want realistic battle damage repair times? Do you want them to be sped up? Honestly, an awesome addition as it means both people who just want to relax and blow up some ships in the Pacific, as well as players who want to have a diehard reenactment of the battle for the Pacific and have it their way. Talking about the camera perspective, the store does talk about how you can either follow the battle through the eyes of an officer on board of a ship, blinded by their advanced fog of war system, which we haven't really found any intel on, or a more Silent Hunter style God Eyes camera where you can fly around and follow your Dauntless dive bombers making that final run among one of the Japanese carriers at Midway. The devs want to again double down on their statements that this game is going to be very historically accurate as well as immersive, whether it's the aforementioned researched camos and markings or accurately named officers and pilots or the dynamic soundtrack. I personally can't wait to check out the game. I actually played a little bit of the game War on the Sea, and I'm interested to see how this game will differ from War on the Sea. But for now, we'll have to wait and see. And with that said, we've come to the end of this video. I hope I got you half as excited for TFA as I am, and I hope to bring you some actual gameplay content soon. What do you think of the game so far? Let me know in the comments, and I'll catch you in the next one.